Hello and welcome to IH Talks. I'm Christopher Walker from IH Bielsko Biała in the south of Poland. Today we're talking about teacher talking time with Glenn Standish. Hello. Hello, Christopher. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So, Glenn, you're up in uh, Torun, I believe. Yeah, I'm um, probably about, what is it? Five hours, or maybe even more, um, north of you. <laughs> I'm in Torun at IH Torun. I've been here as the director of studies for ten years now, um, and Torun is in north central Poland, great location, and uh, famous for being the birthplace of Nicholas Copernicus, and it's famous also for its chocolate gingerbread. There you go. Wow, Not IH, a, lot, but a lot to recommend, <laughs> it, certainly. So, ten years as a DOS, you've probably had a lot of teachers come and go oh, yeah. and that's probably one of the reasons that you wanted to revisit this idea of teacher talk time is that right yeah very much so i mean it's something which you know is hammered into or instilled into celta trainees um right from the get-go that it's a negative thing mm -hmm. and they should reduce the teacher talk time and i remember when i did i didn't do celta but i did trinity tesol and i remember i was told you know basically shut up <laughs> yeah yeah, I heard the same sort of things. And yet when I'm in the classroom, it's astonishing just how often the students want me to say something to them. They want me to interact. It's almost as if, almost as if they were there so that they could experience a little bit of uh, the outside world or something yeah, like course. that. And, you know, they're listening. You know, when you're talking, they're listening to you. And, you know, it's all part of the listening schools process as well. Um, but, you know, I... <sighs> Look, I do talk a lot still, you know, I've been teaching English for 20 years and I kind of ignored what my TESOL tutor said. Um, well, I didn't at first, you know, of course I did listen to him, but uh, with due course, you know, as I was teaching and stuff, I felt, you know, actually there is a time and place for teacher talking time, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I do talk a lot, um, but I don't think it's negative um, at all. Um, students get a lot out of it. They seem mm -hmm. to enjoy it. But at the same time, what's very important, this is something I mentioned in my article, is that it's fine as long as the student talking time is high. Yeah. Now, if the student talking time is low and they're literally just passive listeners, then you could argue, yeah, yeah, I understand. That's not such a good thing. But if your teacher talking time is, you know, at the same level as the student talking time, you know, what's the issue? <laughs> And I suppose one of the biggest problems with teacher talking time is that it's not that the teacher is talking, it's that they're waffling. Yes. It's when they're either explaining um, a grammar point uh, off the cuff or they're introducing another activity that they've not really staged very well. They haven't thought ahead to how they're going to model the activity. So they're kind of talking around it rather than getting to the point. Well, explaining a grammar point shouldn't be like that anyway because that's yeah. far too teacher-centered and what we don't want is you know a teacher-centered grammar lesson it's got to be as student-centered as possible so you know maybe introducing the grammar point as an anecdote and then doing a guided discovery so it's very much student-centered is, is mm -hmm. the way forward but yeah you're mentioning things like you know parroting you know like, oh i'm just going to write this on the board you know yeah that you could agree is not essential um english for the students yeah but then the students themselves will pick up a lot of this incidental language, especially if it's kind of formulaic and it's something that the, the teacher would use often. So I remember a whole year group um, of students at, uh, at our school here who would always, when something astonishing happened, they'd always say, oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> or something like that because there was that one teacher yeah. uh who came from that I, sort of background and before. she liked to say yeah. that sort of thing i'd never really heard it before coming to poland and yet it sounded pretty authentic when they said it yeah. and um uh, i thought well you know that's something that maybe would have happened in a in a celta lesson that the celta tutor would have said ah no 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 that's teacher talk time you need to trim that yeah it's like, you know, the classic saying, you know, oops daisy you know, I mean, I'm yeah. sure that some students know that. But uh, yeah, I mean, whenever I teach, I try to throw in um, emergent language, you know, uh, juicy vocabulary, as we like to call it here. I yeah. told them. Um, and then we always board it and then we word bag it. So, you know, they, they record the, the vocab on a card uh, together with the part of speech and, and the meaning. And always it's good to have an example sentence created by the students not just copied from the book or wherever it came from and then we use that and we put it into a bag and we regurgitate the language through um vocab games and things like that mm -hmm. 
So it's good to have systems in place within the classroom so that the Very teacher so. kind of, they understand when it's okay to use their sort of teacher talk time, but this is what you do with it. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, like um, a great example of teacher talk time is telling an anecdote yeah. um, about yourself, but you have somehow inserted the target language that you want to teach into the anecdote. You could do it as a dictogloss, which is great. You know, but so you're still talking, but the students you know, are actually doing all the work for you. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know what a dictogloss is, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering, you know, if our listeners know. <laughs> um, and it's just a great way of dictating language and they're, they're building the sentences. Um, they might not necessarily get all the words that they can listen to, but they're rebuilding everything and it's a great way. So, you know, that's another example of good use of teacher talking time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what do you think should change so that teachers are more aware of the the kind of benefits of a little sprinkling of teacher talk time? I just think the the attitude of self tutors mm -hmm. <laughs> just showing you know, showing yes okay the pros and cons of both these things you know um, and just showing that you know okay maybe it's not such a bad thing. I can understand why they do it because you know it's either yay or nay I guess for mm. a newly qualified yeah. teacher. Yeah. Um, but you know with more experience and time you know it does get you know easier should we say <laughs> yeah so it's a little bit looking for an analogy it's a little bit how we might tell our lower level students never put will in the if clause <laughs> but when they get to a higher level we can say actually we need to revisit this and yeah. this is the reason why we do it exactly exactly right so in that case then glenn if i can summarize uh what you're saying then is that uh we need to distinguish between uh, purposeful, useful teacher talk time, such as sharing anecdotes, uh, bringing a little bit more uh, natural language into the classroom and kind of giving the students what they have come to us for in the first place, which is uh, a taste of the outside world, the greater world beyond the, the teaching context. We have to distinguish all of that from waffle, essentially, unplanned, yeah. um, just word after word that doesn't really do anything for anybody and admittedly in a four-week Zelda course there's probably not enough time to do that <laughs> so you know I, I do forgive all Zelda teachers <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have that forgiveness <laughs> wow well thank you so much glenn standish from thank you ih much, toron thank you. thank you thank you for your time today and that brings to an end our ih talk for today thank you